So you've made a Minecraft server and you need to know how to port forward for it. Well, in this video, we're going to show you exactly how to port forward on your Minecraft server. Now, we do have an in-depth text guide linked in the description down below that will cover everything we're covering in the video as well. Why do we provide that? Well, because sometimes reading is better than video. We understand that, and that's why we have both options. For most of the tutorials we have, we have both options because I actually like to read a lot of times more so than video. I like to teach like this via video, but read stuff when I'm learning how to do it myself. So here we have an in-depth text guide for you. You. But that being said, the goal is to take you from having started your Minecraft server to be joining your Minecraft server using your public IP address and even letting your friends join your Minecraft server. But that being said, port forwarding is difficult. It is the hardest part of making a Minecraft server, in my opinion, and it's made even more difficult because every router is different. If you have a Netgear router from the previous generation and not the most recent generation, for example, it can look completely different than the Netgear router tutorials out there showing you how to port forward. Same thing with like a Linksys router or an Asus router. It's all different. And while in this video, we're going to be going over the common terms and how to port forward. What if you just don't want to have to worry about it? You're done with it. You just want to play Minecraft with your friends. Well, that's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple. At Simple Game Hosting, you can start a Minecraft server with mods, mod packs, plugins, or vanilla in just a few clicks and you don't even have to worry about port forwarding or even using your own computer's hardware. We take care of the security of the server, we take care of the server's hardware, and you literally can just get the IP and join. You can customize the server however you want as well, adding in different mods, plugins, mod packs, and changing things like the message of the day on the server, anything you want, and anything that you can change on a Minecraft server hosted yourself, you can do so on Simple Game Hosting. And if you have any issues along the way, we do have live chat support and a high quality help center to help you out. So if you're just done with the whole port forwarding and it's just too difficult, you just want to play Minecraft, go check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple to start your own Minecraft server the simple way. Now with that being said, we do have this linked in the description, which is how to make a Minecraft server locally. And that's what you're going to need to do if you're going to be using this guide to port forward. With that being said, it is more difficult to host this server than a simple game hosting server, so keep that in mind. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive on into it. Now the first thing we want to do is actually minimize our browser and then what we want to do is there's our minecraft server by the way set up and ready to go is open up the command prompt so go to the windows icon start menu and type in cmd then you want to go ahead and open up this command prompt and then in here you want to type ip con fig ip config exactly like that and hit enter now here we want to make a note of two numbers so i'm just going to go ahead and open up notepad to do that but uh, you can use a post-it note or write them down somewhere else wherever you're going to be able to find these numbers again for me notepad is just the easiest the two numbers we want is the ipv4 and the default gateway so the ipv4 address is going to be found over here on the left right towards the top ipv4 in our case that's 192.168.1.30 yours is most likely going to be completely different that's why we're getting this this way rather than me just telling you what it's going to be for the default gateway it's down here at the bottom for me now if you have two things next to default gateway basically two lines the first line may be numbers and letters that's not the one we want we want the one that's just numbers usually it's on the second line under the default gateway in our case that's all i have but if you have that be sure to look for it so 192.168.1.1 that may be the same or different it just kind of depends on your router configuration. Now, from here, what we want to do is make sure the Minecraft server is stopped. So if you've not stopped your server already, I have, but if you've not, go ahead and stop the server because if you try to port forward and join later without restarting the server, it won't work. So it's best to stop the server, port forward, and then start the server, which we'll do later. So now what we want to do is go ahead and open up our browser. And in our browser, we want to start a brand new tab. Just open up a brand new tab here. And then in this new tab at the top, type in your default gateway. So for us, it's going to be 192.168.1.1. But for you, it's probably something different. That's perfectly okay. So we just want to go ahead and copy that and paste it. And then go ahead and enter and open this up. And some sort of login box is going to open. For you, it could be completely different than mine. Mine just kind of popped in from the top of the screen. Yours may be in the center of the screen and look like a nice GUI. It could be a literal pop-up that happens, but you'll get some sort of a login box. Now, this is not the same information you use to log into your Wi-Fi network. So we need to make sure that we get the correct information. How do we do that? Well, there's a guide in the description down below. It's very helpful, the description down below. And it shows you how to find your router's password. I'm going to quickly go through the methods here because it's pretty simple. Method number one, talk to the person who set up your internet. Just 
go talk to them. If it's a parent, if it's a spouse, if it's a brother, if it's a sister, go talk to the person who set up your internet. They may know what the router's username and password is. If not, check the router itself. A lot of times there's a physical sticker on the router with the username and password on it. So if that's the case, come back here and try it. See if it works. Next is trying the default username and password. And this can be done by clicking here. And this is where you can find a lot of the most common routers. And by a lot, I mean pretty much every most common router that's out there and what the default network information is or default login information is. For example, if you go to Netgear, you can find the password and then you can see all the different default username and passwords for all of these. And this works for any of the routers that are out there. Asus is another popular router creator. You can come in here and there they are. You got to find your model number for your router. This is usually on the router itself, but that is a great way to find the information. And then if you do find the default information that's not working, you can reset your router. Usually there's a reset button on the router and you can press that hold it for 30 seconds or so and then after you've done that it should reset the router and you should be able to log in it might take it a second to reboot but that's the next method and then last but not least is contacting your isp most people don't get to this point usually you can find your information by method four but um occasionally you will have to contact your isp because they control kind of the login information it's a bit weird every isp is different it's not that common but it can happen so with that we can now go ahead and log in i'm going to do that and i will meet you once i've logged into the router so here we are i've logged into the router and unfortunately yours is probably going to look completely different and that's just part of it but before you click off the video because you're like this isn't what i was looking for I'm going to give you all the common terms that port forwarding might be. But we've also got in the description a guide on how to port forward on the most popular routers that are out there. Even if your router is not mentioned, by the way, there's probably a router similar to yours on that list. So go check it out. See if it's in there. Watch the video. Pick up on the terms. And then you'll probably be able to locate it in your router. Now, with that being said, don't be afraid to click around, right? If you click on something and you don't mean to click on it, just click back off of it, right? Just, it's okay. No big deal. Not a problem whatsoever. And on top of all that, if you get prompted to save something and you don't know what you're saving, just don't save it. I mean, you can't really break stuff with your router. And if you do, you can just reset it back to default, which you may have had to do anyway. So don't worry about it. You can pour it forward. You've just got to click around and look for it. It could be in an advanced tab. It could be in advanced advanced. It could be in security. It could be in apps and gaming. It could be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming or NAT forwarding NAT forwarding it could be in an administration tab or a security advanced tab now for me it's in advanced and then it's in advanced again and then it's in port forwarding slash port triggering this could also be called single port forwarding or port triggering slash port forwarding Overall, you're looking for something that says port forwarding, individual port forwarding. It could be, by the way, this could also be in an administration area. I don't know if I mentioned that. So many different locations for it, but you're looking for port forwarding. Now, once you have found port forwarding, it could look like a few things. You could be like me where I have to click add custom service, or it could just be a big long list of empty boxes taking up the entire screen of different things that you can fill out for your port forwarding. Now, it kind of just depends on the router. Generally, modern routers, you're clicking add, create, new for a port forward, something like that. But older routers did just have big boxes. Whenever we were doing tutorials back in 1.7 for Minecraft servers, that's what you would have to use. Just a big boxes, just a big long list of boxes and you just fill out the first one. So here we've added a new port forward or added a new service in my case. For the service name or the ID on your router, this is just going to be a name that you'll be able to recognize what the port forward is for. So for us, it's just going to be Minecraft Java Server, right? Now you can name it whatever you want, but again, it's just for your use. So just make sure you know what it is. For protocol, it's going to be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or literally the word both. Both. Just both. B-O-T-H. Both. No matter what, you want to make sure that both the TCP and UDP protocols are selected. Now, you may need to do this twice if you can only select one. Do it once, leaving everything else the same for TCP. Then do it again for UDP, leaving everything else the same. You might have to change the name. You could change it for UDP in that case. But nevertheless, you want to make sure you do it twice because you want to make sure both of these are selected. For external port, for internal port, for first port second port for inside port or outside port it doesn't matter what your router calls it for anything that mentions the word port p-o-r-t you're going to enter in the number 25565 so i have external port 25565 for internal port you guessed it 25565 because it has that magic word 
port. Anything that involves the word port, 25565 is the answer. Now, for our internal IP address or our local IP address, this is going to be your IPv4 address we found earlier. Now, for some of you, you might be like, what internal IP address? And that's because you have a list, you have a drop down box with a list of all of the devices that are connected to your network. Luckily, this is a great router to demo this for you on because I have both, right? I have where I can enter in the IPv4 address here, which in my case is 192.168.1.30. So we can go ahead and enter in 30 there. But I could also select it from this list that's under it here. And if we find it, the Kraken is what I've named my PC. And it's 192.168.1.30. And that matches the one we found earlier. So I could select it there as well. It doesn't matter which one you have. If you have both, you can do what I did. Do both. It really doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that the internal IP address is either Either the IPv4 address we found earlier, or you've selected the device that you're starting your Minecraft server on. Finally, we can go ahead and click apply and the port forward is created. That is unless you're asked for an external or outside IP address. Luckily, everyone who is watching this video, every single one of you needs that IP address because that is how your friends will join your Minecraft server. So everyone who's watching this video, how do we get our public IP address, our external IP address? Well, in the description down below, we have a link to this, and this is your IP address. All this web page does is take your IP address and give it back to you. Now, as you can see, there's a little ad for simple game hosting because at the breakdown.xyz slash simple, first link down below, you can start your server without having to worry about port forwarding. And I understand how it's very annoying to port forward. So click this, go start your server the simple way. But nevertheless, you can also see what you can get from your port forward here. That's why this server is not meant to be public. It's, it's meant to be just for you and your friends because... As you can see, latitude and longitude can be found. Your city, your region, your country, all of that can be found from this. But I'm going to go ahead and click on it to copy the IP address. You can only see 4.3 here because you want to keep this private. We don't want to give this to everyone on the internet. And then if you did need it for your port forward, you can go back here and enter it. Otherwise, let's go ahead and minimize our browser. And we can start our server. So just double click on the server.jar and your server will go ahead and start. I'm going to open up Minecraft as well, and we'll join this. If you were to get this pop-up, by the way, you most likely won't. But if you do, it is important that public networks is checked. This is actually one of the most common reasons that after we port forward here, someone won't be able to join your server. Luckily, if that does end up being the case, you didn't click both of these here, public and private, and click allow access. We do have a guide in the description down below on how to allow Java through your Windows Defender firewall. This has helped almost 300,000 people fix that issue issue that we just had. Basically, if you hadn't have selected that correctly, this helps you fix that. So if you're a port forward, everything's good, and your friends still aren't able to join, go through this guide because it will help you fix that issue. Nevertheless, our server has started. Let me get Minecraft up. So here we are. The server is started and Minecraft is open. If we go to multiplayer, and then we want to go ahead and click direct connection. Simple game hosting. Look at that. And then once we've clicked direct connection, you could add this server, by the way, but direct connection is just easier for the video. Paste in the IP address. Now, you can only see 4.3 here because, again, you don't want to give this out to everybody and anybody. And then click join server. We'll join right on in. Unless you don't. You may not join into your server this way. And you can see it on the left-hand side here, Nick's Games, but there is some stuff kind of whited out, not shown here because you can see the public IP on the left-hand side as well. But you may not be able to join your server with your public IP address. The only person that has to, by the way, is your friends. You can join your server using the IP address localhost. Literally the words localhost, all one word. As long as your friends can join via the public IP, that is all that matters. Now at this point, if you do have any issues with your server or with people joining, it's most likely due to that Windows Defender issue, but it could also be a VPN if you've got a VPN live. If that's the case and a VPN is turned on, you'll want to turn it off, re-get your public IP from the website in the description, and then try to join your server using that IP address. VPN cannot be active while you're hosting your server because, well, it sits in between you and the internet, thus preventing people to connect. Also, you may need to turn off your antivirus. That is super, super common. So turn that off as well if you do have issues with your port forward. Again, though, in the description down below, we have that guide on how to allow Java through your Windows Defender firewall. This is the most common issue. And then after that, we do have an in-depth guide on fixing broken Minecraft servers. It's 21 minutes of me troubleshooting Minecraft servers. Pretty simple. And that's what it is. It's 20 minutes of me fixing different stuff on Minecraft servers, including people not able to connect. So there you have it. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to start a Minecraft server without having to do any of this port forwarding mess, of course, Simple Game Hosting is in the description down below. The breakdown to XYZ slash simple. Anyway, we'll see you in the next video. Give it a thumbs up and I am out. Peace.